going to start off by uh, getting your MI cable ready to be installed. First thing you've got to do is make sure you uh, cut yourself a nice square end. See, so, uh, this MI cable has been cut with a set of cable shears, and as you can see there, you've had a little bit of a uh, disformation of the cable. Now, this can cause shorts. So what we've got to do is initially start off with a nice clean square end. So what, to do that, I'm going to use my hacksaw. What I'm doing now, cut myself a nice square end on the MI cable. See there now, that cable nice and square with no uh, deformities anywhere around the outer sheathing. Okay, now we're ready to uh, decide how much of the outer sheathing we need to strip off. So we get our accessory, which uh, the MI cable is going to go into. We're going to put it in, and remember, like always, we're going to add two fingers. So when we add two fingers, a little bit of spare, that is where we're going to strip off the outer sheath. Now we're going to strip off the outer sheath and being as careful as always, not to cut ourselves, make sure we always use the cable for protection. And we're going to ring round and then we're going to strip off the outer insulation. When we do that, always make sure we are above a bin, that way keep good housekeeping and it saves time at the end of the day. So what we're going to do, strip off the outer sheath. Once that's done, most important part is to get our cable into our work net and keep it secure. We're going to put our cable in. We're going to keep it nice and secure. Tighten up our work net. Stop the outer sheath and spinning. We're then going to get our joy stripper. Now the joy stripper must be set on the correct set. On our joy stripper, which we're going to be used to remove the uh, outer sheathing, you can see there it's set to 3L 1.5. What that stands for is three core, light gauge, 1.5 millimeter cross-sectional area cable. Now to check that's in the right position, you make sure that your blade is in the hole opposite corresponding across. Okay, next thing we're going to do is get our joy stripper. We're going to put it on top of our cable. And then what you've got to do is press on. But you've got to press on the center of the joy stripper. So you've got to press on and rotate at the same time. You will start to see the joy stripper start to cut. That is when you move your hand from the center to the outside, supporting the cable with your left hand. As you wind the joy stripper on, you just gradually move your left hand away, exposing the magnesium oxide. Just keep on going. If the outer insulation gets a little bit too long, just bend it over, keep supporting the cable all the way to get to the end. And then because your joystick is touching the outer insulation, it will stop, ring round, and then remove. Then what you've got to do is remove magnesium oxide. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to have to decide how much of the outer sheet we're going to strip off. If you put your gland, your sh sorry, your shroud up to the surface, that will give you a guide of how much you can remove. So my shroud will cover easily this amount. I remove our sheath. Again, get it over the bin. Saves all the rubbish falling on the floor. Once you've done that, it's a good idea then to put your shroud over the top so you don't forget it nothing worse than fitting everything and realising you haven't put your shrouds on. You're going to put your shroud on, get it out of the way. Next, you're going to get your MI gland. Now it's important you get the right gland for the right cable. 
This is three core, so we've got three core clamped. So the gland now, making sure the outer lock nut is slack, goes over the top, and up the spool through the middle, and that slides down. Once that's down, get it out of the way, keep it out of the way by using the shroud. So now we're ready to start putting the pot onto the MI cable. So at this stage, we're going to put it back into the work mate. This way we will support the cable. So you want to put as much of the cable into the work mate as you can. That makes sure it's fully supported. And then tighten up. When you tighten the, the work mate up, make sure you do it hand tight. That's it there. Get your gland body out of the way. So now we're ready to fit the pot onto the MI cable. Now we're going to fit the pot to the cable. There's two different methods of doing this. First one I'm going to show you is my preferred method. So we're going to put the pot onto the cable. Now keeping this nice and square, we're going to use our fingers to start the pot to go onto the cable. It will start a bite. At this stage, you might have to support the workmate with your foot. So as you go like that, then just wind it on, keeping it square, and you will hear it start to bite. Now get it as far on as you can with your fingers. Once it's on as tight as you can with your fingers, then you get yourself a pair of electrician's pliers. Hold your pliers in your right hand, and keep on pressing the pot on with your left hand. And then wind on whilst pressing on at the same time. And the pot will bite on. And then all we do is tighten the pot up. There is other methods to put the pots on for people who don't like the pliers. Our first one is the potting tool. This one goes over the top and gets tightened on to the uh, brass gland. And then we wind the pot on using the potting tool. The reason I don't like using the potting tool is you can't see how far you've wandered, wound the pot on easily. One important part, make sure you don't blow into the magnesium oxide because the magnesium oxide is hydroscopic and will absorb the moisture out of your breath and could result in a short. So what I suggest you do, just tap your pot out, don't blow on it. As you can see now we've wound the pot on and what we've got to do is wind the pot on so far that the outer sheath, the copper cable, extends into the inside of the pot. Now it has to blow the dome by about one or two millimeters. So about that distance there. And once you've got to that stage there, I'd like you to spread out your cables so that they're in a triangular formation. One at 12 o'clock, and then the other two legs down at the corresponding angles. And it's at this stage now, we can start to fill our pot with M air with compound. So we're ready to fill our pot with the compound. So what we're gonna do, get your compound, You've got to make sure, number one, you don't touch the compound because that will just take the moisture out of your fingers and induce it into magnesium oxide. And two, you've also got to fill the pot from one side and one side only. The reason behind that, if you fill it from one side, the compound will go down and out the other side, pushing the air out. So that's what we're going to do now. We're just going to gradually fill the pot full of compound. As you can see, it's going down, down, and it's going to come out the other side. Little bits at a time, there's no rush. I just want to make sure we get all empty. Yep, plenty of compound in. Once you've finished, seal up the compound and keep it ready for your next job. Okay, so we're at this stage now, we can straighten the conductors. We then go to introduce the seal. The seal's in a triangular position, 
So what we've got to do there is make sure we keep our conductors in a triangular shape. Don't twist them, because if you twist them, you will create a dead short. So we're now going to introduce our conductors in through the seal. Once it's in there, what we're going to do, we're going to slide down the seal. And what we're going to do is make sure the seal is on as square as possible. Making sure that it's not at an angle. And it's at this stage now where I recommend we get the test instruments out and we make sure we've got no dead shots.